Hello friends, welcome back to our course Math Essential for Machine Learning and today we are going to discuss about matrix calculus and build an intuition about it. Okay. So, let's uh, remind ourselves that what we learned while using that Python program and that Excel spreadsheet while calculating the sale price of a house depending on a single variable, uh, the area in square feet, the, our equation looks something like this, you know, m of area, right, times plus the intercept. So, basically, it looks, looks something like a straight line y is equal to mx plus b. Now, this was the case when we had a single variable, right, or when we did that univariate calculus. Now, if I have more columns or more fields, then for example, say I have not only the area in square feet, but I also have the number of bedrooms. So, the same equation can be written as something like this. So, instead of mx, now I am going to write as m1 x1, x1 being the area plus m2 the slope for the say number of bedrooms then it becomes x2 plus an intercept right and say if i had three columns okay so m1 times the area in square feet plus m2 times the number of bedrooms and say m3 times the number of floors in that property and so on so basically as we have more and more fields and if I have to fit a straight line you know, to make some prediction, I can use this notation. And if you look at this, you know, and if I consider M, the capital M as a row vector, right, which can have elements like M1, M2, M3 and so on. And if I have a X vector, which, which can be a column vector and it can have elements like x1, x2, x3. So, what I can do is I can then represent my sale price right in this vector notation. Okay. So, it can be m dot product x right plus b right. Now, Okay, in, uh, in, in a regular practice, we do not keep aside B like this. What we rather do is we will also consider B within our vector representation. So, uh, basically, your M vector will have instead of B, we can write it as M0 and the remaining can be M1, M2, M3. So, this is just a matter of representation. So, M0 is nothing but your B. And what we will do is our x now will have an additional value which is 1 and then we have our x1, x2 and x3. So, if you do a and this is a column vector, okay. so I will just put a transpose here. So, x is a column vector and m is a row vector. Okay. So, we can represent basically our data set using uh, you know the vectors. And you know, in cases, we'll also see that the instead of vectors, we can also use matrices uh, in order to represent our data. Now, let's look into the first example, which is the gradient. So now that I know my uh, predicted sale price, I'm just using this term sale price because now we are more familiar with a example that we have seen. So my data set is nothing but the dot product of my uh, you know coefficients you can say or slopes you can say and we have the column vectors the the data set itself right so if i have to take a derivative right with respect to the n entire columns then i can just represent an i here right now i here represents the number of columns right so it can be if it is a three variable uh, data set, say for example, if I have area, uh, the number of bedrooms and number of floors, then i is going to be, the max of i is going to be three. And I want to see how my function changes if I change one of the columns, right? So, if I change area, so it can be x1. So, if I change x1, what does it do to my 
predicted sale price, right? If I change the number of bedrooms, then what does it change in my sale price? And if I change x3, then what does my sale price change if I change the number of floors of the property, right? So basically, this becomes the derivative of with respect to xi, this becomes more like um, m0, m1, m2, m3, right? Dot product with x1, x2, x3, right? And we have a 1 there. So, it becomes derivative of with respect to i, it becomes m0 plus m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3, right. Now, xi can take any value, so it can be x1, so this will go 0, and if i is equal to 1, then only this term stays, this goes away, this goes away, right. So derivative of dx1 will be equal to only m1, right. And similarly, what I can do is derivative of yp with respect to say dx2, it will become m2 and derivative of yp, if I take dx3, then it will become m3 and so on, right. So, basically, if I take the derivative of my function with respect to x i, what I am getting is nothing but the column vector of, so I am getting this value, right, m 1, m 2, m 3, and which is nothing but the m transposed. That makes sense, right. And because eventually when you multiply it, it becomes a column vector and basically I am taking the derivative of each factor there with respect to that particular variable. So, what we get to conclude is the derivative of your function and if your function looks like this m times x vector, then it is nothing but the transpose of the slopes or the row vector or the slope becomes column vector here, okay. So, this is the first example that we wanted to, to explain that you know when it is a matrix calculus, uh, you know we rather prefer to do it by vector representation or matrix representation, it becomes easier for us to track these individual values. Okay. So, I hope you have learned something new today. If you have any confusions or doubts, please put a comment in our comment section and stay tuned and keep following us. Alright, have a nice day.